The new Batman Adventures is a continuation of Batman, the animated series. The show has a different stylistic approach in terms of both visuals and storytelling. Unfortunately, it did not do nearly as well as its predecessor. In fact, its new stylistic approach was what caused the series to not do as well as the other Batman series, including Batman Beyond and Batman, The Brave and the Bold. Well, that's a shame, really, because the show has a bunch of incredible episodes, with some of them being darker than those from Batman, the animated series. It has gone over the terribly abusive relationship between Joker and Harley, witnessed Batman go berserk without the fear of any consequences, and displayed a crazy ex-boyfriend who's willing to burn his lover down for dumping him. And that is exactly what today's video is about. Here are nine such episodes from the series that are super dark and super on brand for a show centered around the Dark Knight himself. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> Number 1. Over the Edge The eleventh episode from the new Batman Adventures, known as Over the Edge, opens with Commissioner Gordon and the Gotham City Police Department, or the GCPD, storming into the Batcave. They begin to shoot at Batman and Robin, with full knowledge of their real identities. Soon they plunge into the dock and onto the Batboat while Alfred is arrested by Harvey Bullock. The Bat Boat finds another obstacle with the police boat that fires rockets at them. But fortunately, Nightwing comes to the rescue and fires torpedoes at the police boat. The chase finally comes to a halt when the remaining members of the Bat family reach their hideout. With confusion plaguing the minds of the viewers, Bruce Wayne recalls the events that led to this mess. In a flashback sequence, we go back to Scarecrow's siege at the Gotham City Hall. Batgirl had run after Scarecrow all by herself. They were at an upper level when she struck him, only to learn that the figure in front of her was a decoy. As she turned, Scarecrow hit her with a staff and she plummeted down, crashing onto the roof of Gordon and Bullock's police car. Gordon ran to tend to Batgirl when a dying Barbara called him out as Dad. Shocked, Gordon ripped her mask open to see his daughter's face, who died right in front of him. A few seconds later, Batman arrives at the scene, but Gordon was furious. He had been kept in the dark about Batgirl being Barbara, all while he had aided the masked vigilante throughout his missions. He began to blame Batman for her death, and made it a personal vendetta to bring his story to an end. Gordon revealed that he had learned of the Bat family's true identity from Barbara's computer. He later barged into Wayne Manor with his crew and found access to the Batcave, bringing us to the present. Soon, Nightwing ends up getting arrested after leaving the hideout for supplies. Batman is done with the commotion and parts with Tim with each going their separate ways. Meanwhile, Commissioner Gordon meets up with Bane at the Stonegate Penitentiary. He promises him a reduced sentence in exchange for helping him get Batman. Bane accepts the golden offer. Batman is spotted during Barbara's funeral, where Gordon leaves her casket to chase after the Dark Knight. As Batman reaches the roof of the police headquarters, Bane joins the party and almost knocks Batman out. He's about to kill Batman when Gordon shoots at Bane's feet asking him to stick to their agreement and capture Batman alive to send him off to Arkham. However, Bane betrays Gordon and causes them both to fall over a ledge and to their deaths. At this point, the nightmare comes to an end and Barbara wakes up from her prolonged nightmarish hallucination. She had been attacked with Scarecrow's fear toxin, allowing their interaction, and since then, she had become a victim of her worst nightmare, dying without telling her father about the truth and the nasty consequences that will follow. Number 2. Mad Love Mad Love is the last episode of the new Batman Adventures, and it is divided into three intense parts, one of which dives into the origin of Harley Quinn and how the psychiatrist became Joker's girlfriend and sidekick. At the warehouse, the Joker is obsessively going over his plans to kill Batman in a way that will be equal times comedic for him and humiliating for the Bat. The best of the lot seems to be a plan with Batman being dropped into a tank full of piranhas, but the plan was tossed out because Joker could not find a way to make the piranhas smile. Meanwhile, Harley tries to get the Joker's attention, but he finds her annoying and literally kicks her through the door and into a garbage pile. Harley mopes over her sorry state and thinks about how her career as a psychiatrist is long over, 
she is a wanted fugitive, and the man she is infatuated with treats her like garbage, and to deal with her pain, she finds someone to blame. Batman. The story shifts to the second act where we get a glimpse of how the abusive relationship between the Joker and Harley began. Originally known as Dr. Harleen Quinzel, Harley used to be a career psychiatrist who was interested in extreme personalities. As such, she decided to intern at Arkham Asylum, where she met the Joker. She soon became his personal therapist, while he would use his charms to bewitch her mind. He spoke about his childhood sob story to gain her sympathy and make her laugh, causing her to fall in love with the Joker, all while he complained about how his alcoholic father and Batman never truly understood him. Sympathetic towards her patient, Harley began to see Batman as the problem. Their roles switched soon enough and Harley began to confide in the Joker. Later, the Joker escaped but was brought back by Batman. Seeing his terribly injured state sent Dr. Harleen Quinzel over the edge and she returned to Arkham as Harley Quinn. She neutralized the guards, broke her lover free, and embraced her identity as a criminal with him. In the present, Harley is desperate to kill Batman and get the Joker all to herself, and so she fabricates a story about the Joker trying to kill the city and sends it to the GCPD. When Batman appears, Harley manages to use a sedative on him. In the final act, Batman finds himself hanging upside down over a tank full of piranhas. Harley had realized that she could make the piranhas smile only by hanging Batman from his feet, thus making the Joker's once failed plan successful. She reveals that all she wants is to settle with her sweetheart, which makes Batman laugh beyond his wits. He tells her how the Joker loves no one but himself, and he garners sympathy from everyone, not just Harley. To prove Batman wrong, she calls the Joker up and tells him the plan. Naturally, the Joker is livid to learn that his chance to kill Batman is being stolen. He soon rushes to the aquarium, strikes Harley down, and throws her out of the window, making her fall several stories down into a heap of garbage. And even when Harley finds herself in a god-awful state once again, she blames herself for not getting the joke. On the other hand, the Joker fights Batman, which soon shifts to a sequence on top of a moving train. The clown prince of crime later falls off the train, and the news reports are convinced that he is dead. Meanwhile, Harley is wheeled into Arkham once again, where she vows to disassociate with the Joker. But soon, she receives a flower, along with a get well card with his signature, and changes her mind about letting her abusive, psychopathic lover go. Number 3, Growing Pains. This episode brings forth one of the weirdest plot twists in a budding love story. Tim Drake's Robin finds a frightened girl surrounded by a biker gang. He saves her, but soon learns that she does not have any memory at all. She runs away, and Robin gets interrupted by the bat signal. At Commissioner Gordon's office, Robin daydreams about the girl while Batman talks about a new gigantic criminal with abnormal strength being on the loose. However, Robin remains fixated on the girl instead of the criminal. Later, Tim spots the girl while passing by a bus station and chases after her in his Robin suit. Upon seeing him, the girl begins to cry and falls into his arms, claiming that a man has been chasing her. She cannot even bring herself to remember her own name, so Robin names her Annie. When a huge man, claiming to be her father, tries to take her away, Robin fights for Annie, but the man is too strong and he does not seem to feel pain. Batman joins the chase, but the man escapes. Annie seems to be missing as well, and Batman gets the mud sample from his shoes for investigation. Meanwhile, Robin runs off to search for Annie, who asks him not to try so hard for her. Soon, she spots something familiar, and they head to a lighthouse on a cliff by the ocean shore. The pipes near the shore remind her of something, and Robin follows her. Back in the Batcave, Batman is done analyzing the mud sample and realizes that the man they are looking for is Clayface, who was allegedly dead after falling into the ocean and dissolving. Inside the pipes, Robin and Annie find the huge man that is Clayface once again, and he is happy that Annie has returned. Annie and Robin run away and some of the clay falls on Annie, but they are both shocked to witness the clay absorbing into her skin. Soon, she is reminded of her origin. After Clayface fell into the ocean, his remains drifted near factory pipes that released strong chemicals. It bonded his flesh back, and he began to live in the pipes. But due to the unsafe nature of his abode, he created Annie with his clay, and sent her off to scout Gotham for a place to live. This also meant that Annie was not a real separate person, but that she was part of Clayface. This is not something you would ideally want your crush to be. 
Robin tries to save Annie as he asserts that she is her own person. However, Clayface tries to kill him. Annie rushes to save Robin and throws herself at Clayface. Unfortunately, she gets absorbed, being a part of it after all, making Robin furious. So he uses a solvent to almost kill Clayface when Batman reaches the place of action and stops Robin. Soon, some sparks cause the solvent to ignite prompting an explosion within the pipes while Batman and Robin escape. Clayface is later arrested while Robin remains heartbroken over the strange death and his strange lover. <laughs> Number 4. Never Fear Scarecrow returns in Never Fear with a reverse Uno card. The man who had previously made a name for himself by making people live their worst fears, he flips the script in this episode when he comes up with a gas that makes people lose all of their fear, prompting them to do anything and everything without any fear of the consequences. The episode begins with a man swinging across the skyscrapers of Gotham City. He is stopped by Batman who tries to reason with him, but the man claims that he has no sense of fear. He is spotted by a man in a white suit who soon meets up with another mysterious figure, and it is revealed that the man who was swinging was a test subject. The next day, Bruce tells Tim that the man in the first instance originally had a fear of heights. Soon after, his employee Seymour Gray quits his job and kisses Bruce's secretary as a means to demonstrate his lack of fear. He leaves his wallet on the way out, and Bruce finds a business card that reads, Never Fear. Bruce goes to the address in disguise and finds himself in a self-help seminar where a guru claims to help people get rid of their fear. Bruce casually sneaks away, but soon, Scarecrow knocks him out with a stick. Bruce then awakens in a zoo where he claims to be a petty thief. Scarecrow sprays his gas on him and throws Bruce into a crocodile cage. When he notices red dots appearing on the water, Scarecrow leaves. Soon after, Bruce appears unharmed while the body of a crocodile floats to the surface. Bruce goes back to the Batcave and heads out with Robin in the Batwing. However, he pilots the wing recklessly as he fills Tim in on everything, making Tim realize that the gas had ample effect on Batman for him to pull out stunts in midair, making Tim clutch his seat for his life. Batman and Robin storm into Scarecrow's lair, and Batman fights without contempt for his life, making him more lethal than ever. Robin tries his best to keep Batman safe when Batman throws the guru from the roof of the building, only for Robin to save him. They also learn that Scarecrow is planning to release the gas into the subway system of Gotham City. Robin grapples Batman with a coil and takes away his utility belt, claiming that he is not afraid to kill anymore, so he has to be restrained. He then heads out in search of an antidote. He finds Scarecrow and fights him off, taking the antidote away. He returns to find Batman escaped and recklessly fighting away Scarecrow's goons, throwing them out without caring for their lives. Batman soon reaches Scarecrow and chokes him with his hands, but Robin sprays the antidote on Batman, bringing the madness to an end. Scarecrow is later apprehended. <laughs> Number 5. Double Talk In this episode, the ventriloquist, or Arnold Wesker, finds himself being released from Arkham Asylum. Bruce Wayne offers him a job at Wayne Enterprises to help him out, but life doesn't turn out to be simple for the ex-criminal. He is plagued by dreams of Scarface, Rhino, and Muggsy trying to force him back into a life of crime. His therapist calls it natural and advises him to stay away from his past but his worst fears come true when Rhino and Muggsy confront him to learn about Scarface. Batman gets a whiff of what is going on and heads out to defend Wesker. However, his so-called friends don't give up on him. As Wesker returns home, he gets a call where he hears Scarface, who claims that he is coming back. He keeps seeing Scarface everywhere the next day and finds an envelope asking him to be by his phone at 9 o'clock. Bruce finds Wesker's behavior suspicious and finds the envelope which tells him that Wesker is now in real trouble. Wesker's phone rings that night and he speaks directly to Scarface, who is standing by the street. Batman runs after Scarface who makes the bat chase him into a statue gallery and almost kills him. Meanwhile, Batgirl analyzes the voice on the phone and Batman comes to the conclusion that it belongs to a con man, who later gives up Scarface's location to the bats. At the same time, the real Scarface gets a traumatized Wesker to go back with him. At Wayne Enterprises, Scarface takes Lucius Fox to a vault to gain access to the money inside. Fox is soon knocked out, but Batman and Batgirl crash the party, bringing the madness to an end. Scarface escapes to the roof and claims to use Rhino and Muggsy only to kill them. He throws a bomb at them, causing the bridge to break while Muggsy and Rhino hang for their lives. He then gives Wesker a gun 
asking him to kill them in front of Batman and Batgirl. But ultimately, Wesker fires at Scarface, who falls into a large fan and is tattered to bits. Ultimately, Wesker is allowed to keep his job at Wayne Enterprises, and his problems have been alleviated. Hi, I'm a big fan. Number 6. Torch Song Breakups can be rough, especially when you've been dumped, but some handle it better than others. Ex-pyrotechnics expert Garfield Linz is not one of them. The episode opens with Bruce going out with Shannon on a date. At the show, he meets Barbara Gordon, while the star of the show, Cassidy, seems to be having trouble with her ex-boyfriend and the pyro expert of her show, Linz, who cannot come to terms with their breakup. In a fit of anger, she fires him before going on stage. While Cassidy performs, Linz overloads her stage with a firewall that traps her inside. Soon, Batgirl swoops in to save her while Linz escapes. The next day, Harvey Bullock and his forces storm his apartment, only to find a virtual shrine with candles that have been dedicated to Cassidy. Meanwhile, Cassidy gets a letter that burns in her hands when Linz appears in a fireproof suit, calling himself Firefly. He shoots firebombs at everyone, which is spotted by the Bat Duo. They save Cassidy, but Firefly escapes. The duo proceed to investigate Lynn's apartment, when Batgirl triggers a booby trap that gives rise to a fire in the building. Meanwhile, Cassidy is abducted from her rehearsing studio via a smoke attack. The Bat Duo escape, with Barbara being injured. Meanwhile, they learn of Cassidy's kidnapping and Batman examines a matchbox he had found at Lynn's. He sees the name of Mephisto Paint Company, and Alfred asks him to suit up in something more durable for the next encounter. At the manufacturing plant of Mephisto Paint, Firefly ties Cassidy up and tells her about his plan. He has created a gel that can burn through anything. He plans to pour it down the sewers and ignite it, bringing Gotham City down, and with it, the two of them. He thinks this is the perfect cover for the two of them to disappear together. Fortunately, Batman arrives in a new suit that can withstand Firefly's attacks. However, he is almost defeated when Firefly uses a flaming sword and empties the gel into the sewers. Batman makes the sword fly into the gel and incinerate it, bringing the building to the brink of explosion. Ultimately, the crisis is averted, and only the manufacturing plant is destroyed. However, Cassidy develops a fear of fire, despite being in the profession of engaging with it. <laughs> Number 7. Beware the Creeper The tenth episode of the new Batman Adventures witnesses Jack Ryder's journey from being a news reporter to the Creeper. Ryder anchors a live special from Ace Chemicals and talks about the Joker, whose encounter with Batman in the plant changed the course of his life. The Joker witnesses this and crashes the scene, dousing everyone with laughing gas. He reenacts the incident and tips Ryder into a vat of chemicals on live television. Batman watches the events unfold and reaches Ace Chemicals with Robin, while the Joker keeps pushing Ryder into the vat and even causing it to explode. After Robin's intervention, the Joker knocks him into the controls which accidentally cause the vat to flush out, and with it, Ryder. The Joker escapes, and Ryder is presumed to be dead, when in reality he is transformed into a strong maniac with green hair, yellow skin, and a grin. With his new powers, he decides to get revenge on the Joker as a crime fighter. Ryder, using his own credit card for the transaction, alerts Alfred of his survival, while the Joker learns of someone stealing his image. He tosses Harley out and asks her to find the plagiarist. Meanwhile, Ryder, who now goes by the name The Creeper, finds the Joker's thugs and asks them for the whereabouts of the Clown Prince of Crime. He takes the thugs down and finds a moping Harley Quinn outside. Seeing her, he is instantly attracted and asks her for Joker's location and her phone number. Harley runs away and the Creeper creepily runs after her. She tries to kill him and runs to the Joker's hideout where he throws a vial of explosives at the Creeper who is still unharmed. Batman and Robin are alerted of their whereabouts as a result of the explosion. Joker and Harley escape, while the Creeper unleashes missiles behind their car. As he catches up to them, the Joker begs Batman to arrest him because of how wild the Creeper is. Ultimately, he is sedated, while the Joker is cuffed. Back at Ryder's apartment, Batman gives him a skin patch that turns him back to his normal state, but advises him to keep the patch on if he wants to keep his career. After he leaves, Ryder tears the fabric away and laughs like the lunatic he has become. <laughs> Number 8. Chemistry Probably the most appropriately named episode on this list, 
this story witnesses Bruce Wayne experience unparalleled romantic chemistry with Susan, so much so that he gives up on being Batman and decides to marry her. But of course, there is more to her than meets the eye. Veronica Vreeland gets into a sudden marriage with a man named Michael. During the reception, she introduces Bruce to Susan McGuire. They dance together, and Bruce is immediately smitten with her. He begins to wander off during patrols and acts out of character. After a few weeks, they spend time together on Bruce's private yacht, where he proposes to her, and she happily accepts. He gives up on being Batman and alerts the Bat family of it. The two have a private wedding with friends and family at Wayne Manor, but Veronica and Michael seem to be missing. Bruce also talks about his honeymoon on a cruise with other newlyweds, when Alfred tells him of a phone call from Veronica. Bruce talks to his friend, who desperately pleads for his help and claims that something is terribly wrong with Michael. Bruce hears her scream and heads out to Vreeland Manor. Meanwhile, Michael advances on Veronica, walking through the laser security and instantly heals his wounds. When Bruce arrives, he sees the manor burning while Veronica is unconscious. She is taken to the hospital, and Bruce sends Robin and Batgirl to investigate Michael. Meanwhile, he leaves for his honeymoon. Michael goes to a greenhouse, and it is revealed that he is one of Poison Ivy's creations. Batgirl and Robin find out about this, and also learn that they are planning to attack the cruise where the newlyweds were going on a honeymoon. Robin and Batgirl soon find a chemical to disintegrate the plants and synthesize more of it. On the cruise, Bruce learns that all of the passengers are rich industrialists, married to new partners who are seemingly perfect for them. He realizes that something is wrong, and asks Susan about her past. However, she turns out to be one of Ivy's creations who trapped Bruce using Ivy's infamous pheromones. Bruce electrocutes her vines and traps her inside. Meanwhile, the ship is attacked by giant seaweeds and Ivy claims that their deaths will make their plant partners the heir to their fortunes, but she realizes that Susan is missing. Robin and Batgirl show up and Bruce slips into his Batsuit. They fight off Poison Ivy and Batman throws her aside while the engines of the yacht explode breaking the vessel in half. Batgirl swoops in to save Batman, but Ivy seemingly dies. Ultimately, Batman throws his wedding ring into the ocean. Number 9, Judgment Day. This episode revolves around a new vigilante who wants to bring the rogues of Gotham City to justice, but in his own twisted way. And it's up to Batman to catch him before he goes off the edge. The story opens with Penguin, Two-Face, and Killer Croc conducting illicit business with stolen diamonds. After they leave, the Penguin stashes his goods inside when a man dressed like a judge accuses him of trafficking. The man goes on to brutally attack him for his crimes, sending a gravely injured Penguin to the hospital while his henchgirls are left tied and hanging from the ceiling. Bruce finds the situation ridiculous, while Councilman Corcoran condones the new vigilante known as The Judge in public. The Judge strikes back when Croc attacks a police pickup van. He bludgeons Croc for murder and manslaughter, almost killing him by dropping him off the top of a bridge. However, Batman comes to the rescue and saves Croc before he hits the ground. The Judge meets Councilman Corcoran in private, and it is made evident that they are both affiliated with one another. The next day, it is revealed that the Riddler has been neutralized by the Judge, and that his next target is Two-Face. Harvey Dent hears the news and shoots the TV at the pub, while an undercover Batman follows him in hot pursuit. He grabs Two-Face at his place, offering to help him out when the Judge strikes again. He appears on television proclaiming that Two-Face will die of asphyxiation. As such, the room is gassed. Two-Face tries to open his concealed trap door, but surprisingly, the secret escape hatch has been shut down. No one was supposed to know about it, making the judge and his identity even more intriguing. Batman then uses his Batarang to cause explosions, allowing the pair to escape. Batman later meets with Corcoran, asking for the new vigilante's whereabouts, but Corcoran dismisses him and goes outside. Soon he is abducted by Two-Face's goons. Corcoran finds himself in a courtroom where Two-Face decides to make an example out of him. However, Corcoran offers him kickback money from his slush fund. Two-Face turns down the offer and his goons take the councilman away. He offers the money to the goons as well, but they know better than to betray Two-Face. Meanwhile, Batman and Alfred are able to pinpoint who the judge truly is from one of the clues left at the compound, which teased that the judge had previously won the Marshall Award. The revelation leaves Alfred in shock. At the courthouse, the judge soon arrives to fight off the goons, but he doesn't stop there. He somehow knows about Corcoran's slush fund, and prepares to execute him as well when Batman intervenes. The two vigilantes fight, 
and ultimately Batman unmasks the judge in front of Corcoran, revealing the man to be Two-Face himself. The next day, Alfred and Batman came to the conclusion that the judge is the third personality within Harvey Dent, which he had created to fight crime. The identity was so separate that he unknowingly tried to kill himself, which is why he knew about the secret trap door. He just didn't know that he was Two-Face. Meanwhile, Two-Face sits in his cell at Arkham while a trial goes on in his mind. The judge asks him about his crimes while Two-Face pleads guilty hysterically. Despite such interesting episodes and terrific plot lines, the series failed to leave a mark. You could blame the fast pacing of the series for this, as such deep and dark plots would require slower pacing to flesh out the story better. Here's to hoping that one day we will get a top-notch Batman animated series that caters to an adult audience and is paced like its live-action counterparts. And, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. This has been Corey Whelan for Marvelous Videos. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.